Good evening, hello, hello. Hope you're doing all right. Oh, bed song. That's what I was going to do. Hope you had a good weekend. On this, the last day of February. Well, where have the last two months gone, eh? Where have they gone? Not a lot to draw today. Good evening, Rosemary. It's going to be a good lesson on mixing greens today. And shadow colours, I suppose. Bongs. My clock in the living room's a bit slow today. Quite a lot of colours today because of... because of the mixing of the greens that's 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 where it's important so we will be discussing greens it's come out quite dark on my printer hello tracy how lovely of you uh, how lovely to have you here with us I've only drawn a bit of the branches. To be honest, I don't want to draw too many and then be stuck with them, you know. It's a big old tree. This is the one in People's Park. Right by the war, the war memorial's about here where my hand is. I can't remember when I took this photo. I think I probably took the photo about. I don't know. Could have been last year. I really can't remember. Ooh, excuse me if you wanted. I really can't remember. You do, and also, by the way, I forgot to say, I, I've done it portrait, but you could do it landscape. It doesn't really matter because it's, it's either going to be more sky or other trees. But I thought portrait would look quite nice today. I normally say, don't I, I forgot this, this afternoon. I do normally say when it's square that I do it portrait most most of the time. Oh, 
I'm just too heavy alive tonight. Maybe, it, maybe it's a boring subject. Or maybe people will be doing it afterwards. Which is probably more like, what, what's next week then? Well, landscape with a mid-distance church. Oh, that's quite nice, yes. Well, we're heading towards springtime images. Although, to be fair, this was a summertime photo, but I just thought it was a nice tree. You know I like a nice tree. Thank you, Tracy. I'll give the normal amount of time. So it's coming up to 10 past. Gosh. Where are those 10 minutes gone? Blimey. Let's see if I can get my ear plugged in. Good evening, Rose Marie. How are you? You all right? Good. It will be interesting. No, I'll I'll try to I'll try to discuss it as in depth as we can in two hours, <laughs> whilst actually painting. But hopefully the colour mix inside will. Yes. No. I don't know if I've got. I'm just going to flip. I need to. I just want to click something. No. Okay. I thought I had. And I think it must be in on the on the other. On the other screen. At at, at the shop, I thought I had a a color wheel, but that doesn't doesn't really matter. No. Are you drawn, Rosemary? on the tree trunk I've, I've given myself a ghostly outline of where i want the tree to be but i because it's pale green so it's going to be quite transparent the outside of the tree i i dare say some of my pencil lines are going to show through um which is a little bit frustrating but i need to do it so you can so you can see where i'm going with it otherwise it'll be a little bit tricky Yeah, well, it probably will grow, to be honest. Trees tend to grow exponentially. Whether you want them to or not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I am going to put the sky on first because um, I'll probably make it a little bit paler. But you can actually see in the photograph, which is really interesting, and I and I didn't know I'd done it. That's how skilled I am. Um, that you can actually see the light on the left-hand side in the sky. The sky is paler on the left, um, where you've got the light from the sky, um, which will actually help. So I'm just wetting the squirrel. And... Um, he does, poor little squirrel. No. He has nuts. <laughs> no, I think I, people think I'm already mad. I don't, I think if I was taking my squirrel brush for a walk, I'm going to have to have a little, I don't know which way round it. The, the brush would be his head, wouldn't it, even though it's his tail. If it was a if it was a living thing, the brush would have to be the hair on the head, and the ferrule would be the face. Right, so I've wet around the tree and down to where the background tree line is, um, and I'm going to mix both blues together, cerulean and ultramarine, just to make um, a nice mid green. Although you could go more cerulean. And ultramarine. I'm starting on the right hand side and moving over to the left so it's a little bit lighter on the left hand side. I'm going to sort of skim my brush around because it's starting to dry already. And there's a few little patches within the tree. There I can see a little bit of sky, so we'll pop that in. Something like that. That'll do. Right. Again. Um, so it's just slightly darker on the right. I'm going to lift this colour off. So it's not distracting because we won't need the sky again. It's not like we're doing water or anything today. So... Oh, that my jar of water is a beautiful colour now already. It's a nice, um, almost Wedgwood blue. I let that dry. Now, interestingly, I'm not going to do the background trees first. because we can play around with the background to help bring the tree forward, the main tree forward. So where the light side of our main tree is, we can do the tree darker behind it. And where the dark side of the tree is, we can do the trees behind it lighter. Now that is known as chiaroscuro. Light and dark, basically. Chiaroscuro. Um, it's what... Uh, Caravaggio and Rembrandt used. It's 
so just let it dry. Oh, I haven't got him, but I can get him. I can get him quite quickly. Because we haven't got anywhere to dangle them, you see. But um, we can get them. We had a lovely day in the oil class on Saturday. It was a, a lovely, a lovely morning. I was having trouble. I couldn't. Um, none of Jill's comments. Jill was doing it online, and none of her comments were showing up either. So I couldn't. I knew she was there, but I couldn't see anything that she was writing. So whether that was going to be for everybody, I don't know. Well, that's it. It'll always be there. I've, I have downloaded it. I will put it on onto the art stream at some point. I've just got to find the time. I've still got a tiny soggy bit. I'm going to get the hair dryer on this because I can foresee bubble, um, cauliflowers occurring. Let me just... Let's get a bit of a hair dryer on this. Blown me pin across the room. Hang on a minute, Let's see if I can find it. Oh, no, where did it go? I'm gonna have to disconnect my earpiece for a second because I've got to go under the table. Right, so <coughs> while the um, everything's just drying off and what have you, I'll chat about the colours because we've got two blues and two yellows. Ignore the brown and the red for now. Um, oh, actually, I can probably lift out these paints for a second and hopefully they won't run down the... give you a bit of an idea anyway about what I'm going to talk about although my ultramarine is running low but that's okay so we've got lemon yellow cadmium yellow ultramarine and cerulean or whichever way around you look at it um, so I'll, I'll very quickly chat about green tones And because um, obviously it's all about the green. So 
So lemon yellow is a green based yellow. Cadmium yellow is an orange based yellow. Cerulean blue is a green based blue. And ultramarine is a purple based blue. Now that might make no sense at all, but it will. So if I want a really, really bright green, which we almost do, you know the way the light is really hitting that left side? It's quite a bright green, isn't it? Would you say? Brightish. So we want to reflect in our paint a lot of green. So we'll use a green based yellow and a green base blue, which is lemon, yellow and cerulean. And when you mix those together, because they both have green in it, you get a much, much more vibrant green. If you use phthalo blue or intense blue instead of cerulean, you'll get a much more vibrant green um, bec because it's more intense. You know what, sorry? Well, yeah, it, it, it's it's almost lime green. I mean, the lemon yellow and cerulean will give you a lime green. It's quite, um, I call it a spring green, um, but I don't use it very often. Um, but I think it'll be useful for this. So that's a bright green. If I want a sort of mid tone, I've got two options. Option one is to keep the green based yellow and switch it with the other blue. So that's lemon yellow and ultramarine will give me a mid-tone because only one of those colours has green in it. If you remember, ultramarine is purple blue. So we've got a green yellow and a purple blue. Option two is to keep the green based blue and add the other yellow. Um, and that will be a green base blue and an orange yellow. So that will give us another mid-tone. Um, I kind of like um, cerulean and cad yellow. It's a really nice green. Um, it's quite a summery green. Um, whereas the lemon and ultramarine can go very emerald very quickly. And then lastly, if I want a dull or dark green, I want the yellow and the blue that reflect very little green so we have the orange green and the purple blue um, so because there's not very much green present in those colors it will give us a dull dark green so there's a lot we can do with just those four and if you want to um, dull a color down further that's where the red comes in because red is a complementary opposite to green and a touch of it will dull the colour down. Too much of it will go brown. And it'll look dead. So it's something you have to be aware of. It is. It's like a, a light tree and then a dark tree. So yes, it is more of a ready brown. So let's see if my theory comes in. So I'm going to go with lemon yellow, which is a green yellow. This is just for the weeping willow, don't forget. And a tiny bit of cerulean. So quite a lime green. Uh, 
and to be honest you can cover most of the tree and the grass in this but where you come out into the blue do little almost perforated bits there's not a lot of light on the um, right hand side so I'm not going to worry too much about that but you can see it can really get carried away if you're not careful So I'm having to deliberately break out of my pencil lines. because where, where we're putting the light doesn't necessarily matter in the background because we can put dark behind it and it will push it back in again. And if you want it to appear gr more lemony, where because obviously where this green goes over your sky, the blue of the sky is going to dull it down a little bit more. So you could use more neat yellow in the sky area for your little dotty dabby bits. And just be where the sun is hitting it and then I'm going to just put a quick wash on the grass see I've left quite a lot I mean there's nothing at all stopping you doing the whole tree give my brush a bit of a clean let that dry it doesn't even have it doesn't actually have to dry
drying quite quickly today. So we'll ignore background trees. Now, because my green is very lemon yellow heavy, to do a mid green, I'm going to have to keep the lemon yellow and add ultramarine. Otherwise, if I switch it, it might look a little bit odd. And because it'll be a, diff a totally different yellow with cerulean blue. Um, so if you've got if you've got more of a blue in your green, you could maybe do the blue and cadmium yellow. Or actually, why not try and mix the two? Because you might be surprised. So um, at the top of my tile, I'll show you the difference. If I do lemon yellow and a little bit of ultramarine, which I always end up doing a lot of. Um, too much lemon and it won't look any different. Too much ultramarine and it might go a little bit, uh, you're too emerald-ish. But that's just a rough mix that I've got there. Now if I did the other way with the cadmium yellow and cerulean, Hmm. I think, I think it's going to be, um, doesn't show much different on the screen, but you'll be able to see difference on your, It would have been very bright if you used Thalo. Yeah. So can you see the differences in the two different green shades? I'm I'm tempted to do the lemon yellow ultramarine. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter which one you go with. Um, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll almost certainly increase the ultramarine mix um, as we progress and then go into the cad yellow um, so it gets darker. Um, but I'm going to just do the dark side, even though it's going to be more of a shadow. I want to... off my beard actually I'm not going to worry too much about um, the right hand side fully because um, We've got to put a light tree behind that, haven't we? So we'll have to put a bit of the dark back in front of it. So 
there where you've got your other tree don't worry too much um, and this is just going to be a series of long dangly perforated lines like a, a sewing stitch I guess that you can do and leave some of the brighter green that we just did but this will have to be on the right hand side of anything because the um, that's the side of the shadow it does get trimmed this so it, as soon as it gets low enough near the floor they chop it off you can you can drag it down to the floor make it feel a little bit more natural now I'm doing all of this in my squirrel but you can you can go a bit more detailed if you feel you need to Yeah, not that. Well, because we've got, we've got the 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 hardest bit actually is incorporating the light and the dark, because we have to look at the the clumps and the the parts of the tree that is coming forward and the parts of the tree that is. Um, sort of recessed a little so here there is a darker line that makes it split but don't forget we've also got shadow to put on all of this hmm yeah 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 so I'm using this to to create the sort of divisions in clumps because there are some areas that are really quite dark. And I'll probably need to mix more colour up, which is frustrating. But because I know I'm only using the yellow and the blue, I should be able to do it okay. Because as you know, once the real darks go in, that's what will make it pop and be more solid. But I'm just looking at, there's lots of little pockets of darker greens that almost bring the lighter tones forward. And that's what I'm trying to create with dotted lines. Yeah, I suppose a dry brush wouldn't wouldn't be too bad. I'm going to keep that colour on my brush, but switch to a number four round and add a little more lemon yellow 
to some of that green. So it's slightly darker than the original colour, but slightly lighter than the colour I'm using. And that's going to help me um, put some mid-tone dotted lines in. Or is it playing out? Mm. I'm not getting any alerts on my end. It has been raining, but I don't know. It will, it will, um, it will build up. Oh, the one from the drawing class. Okay. Did it work? But now you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. When is the birthday? Um, yeah. It's before the Jubilee.
I'm being a bit fiddly with this. Well, that's what I'm thinking of. I switched to the smaller brush to give me more dots and dabs. But I'm not sure as if I really need that many. <clears throat> I think I I won't do a cad yellow, cad ultramarine green in this tree. Because there'll be too many different mixes then, you know. But I'll, I'm going to put purple shadow in, which will make a big difference. Hmm. But I will, what I'll do before I do my purple green, no, my purple shadow colour, I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine to my lemon and add a pinhead of red just to do a slightly darker version. Um, too much red and it'll go brown um, which that's starting to do so let me shove a bit more blue back in well, that'll, that'll do and then I can do some the trunk yeah well to be honest you could do without burnt sienna when you mix in like this if you've got um, red in there because you could indeed uh, make your own tree trunk colour. Shall we do that? Because then it's all going to be really quite nice then with just two yellows, two blues and one red. Maybe we'll do that. You'll regret saying anything now, Rosemary, won't you? And it's not really, the, the atmosphere in the world is not really conducive for high creativity and fun. Yeah. I suppose it's going to look a bit like a wig. Maybe. I'm going to use some of this darker green to go round over my... Um, pencil lines. Well, this is it. The darker your darks end up, the lighter your lights will be. Yeah. Thanks. It is just a lot of lines and dots. It's not... I haven't done anything exciting. It might change once you've got the background trees because you can use those to define to define the side lines, you know. But I I might not put my purple shadow green in until I have to put the background trees in because at least then I can play about Uh, 
and I'm doing that thing that I'm always saying to all of my dear students not to do. I'm running low on the dark green mix that I've made from lemon yellow and ultramarine with a bit of cadmium red. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just adding more water so it's no longer a dark green. So I'm going to do what I say to do and I'm going to mix some more up and I'd rather have some spare and then keep diluting what I've got. I need to follow my own instruction and not just keep it. Do as I say, not as I do. I know. I've never been like that. My dad used to be really annoying and just say, because. Because I said so. Because why? Because I said so. No, because why? And I do think if he'd have actually reasoned with me, even though I was a young child, I'd have understood it more Tracy, how's it going? Okay. You know, I'm quite pleased with this tree. I think mine's going to go wrong, though, once the other trees are around it. However, um, as it's... Uh, because I am... Don't forget, Tracy says, Hi, Barry, it's going OK. It does not look like yours, though. That is because I'm a creative genius, Tracy. And I've been painting trees since I was a sapling myself um 
and and I also and I also know what I'm doing, and you don't know what I'm doing, and you don't know what's coming next. So it's very hard, you know. I think I think you're all too hard on yourself in 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 art classes because I I know what's coming next. You don't, you see. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the dark sort of make the depth, but I will go darker than that. So, before I go pop the kettle on, and it'll give you a chance to catch up, I'm going to add more red. I'm not going to use burnt sienna. I'm going to use red in that green. Oh, look at that beautiful brown for me trunk. And I'll do a little bit in there, but I think some of that trunk is going to end up... Um, in shadow anyway it's such a I love this tree um a couple of years ago uh, there was a, a family of woodpeckers sitting in it one morning when I was going to work which was really magical to see Quite brown, but we'll dull that down with um, purple shadow colour later. So I'm going to go make a drink, and then when I come back, we will look at the background trees, the grass, and then add shadow everywhere. But um, it is a really interesting exercise, not only in trees, but in shadow. Um, and my printout's so dark that I'm going to have to rely on the tiny screen in front of me on my laptop rather than um, what's around on in, in big next to me. But never mind. I'll be back in a minute anyway.
do 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 Dropping everything everywhere. I'm back. Your trees all looking fantastic in the few minutes while I've been out. Oh, well, that's okay. Right, so if you remember, I am going to put a slightly lighter green, that lemon and lime, the lemon and um, cerulean. There's a little short, oh, that's a bit too much blue. Let's add a bit more yellow. Because that's right behind. Just there. I'll put some darks in it later, but that's lemon and cerulean. Oh, there is a hint of something a bit a bit lighter there. I'm not going to be too careful about it. However, what I should do is while I've got this and there is a little bit more blue in this mix than in the grass, is I should do a bit of dry brush grass with this colour so it's not... Um, it's not going to be just like a stripe of light and a stripe of dark. Oh, that's not a very good dry brush though, is it? A, it's not very dry. Let's just give a bit of texture. But it'll stay sunny because it'll be the darks that make a huge, huge difference to this. Um, even though some of some of it is going to be almost washed on. This dry brushing isn't going to work. I said I'll ruin my painting because you've all said how nice it is. I'll, I'll, I'll probably ruin it now with all the other stuff. Although most of that's going to be quite dark. The light actually is quite high. I think this was on a lunchtime because you can almost see the tree shadow is around the tree. So the other the other side of the tree is much lighter. Uh, but we can't see that, so we're not going to worry. As we know from experience the second half is always the faster half so i might just do a few extra lemon and ultramarine dotty branchy leafy bits in these they're still wet but if i do it while it's wet it goes um a little bit blurred out of focus which ain't a bad thing however this is these are these are so incidental Because in the real dark bits that we'll put on, we can um, we can change tree shapes and all sorts of things. So that's that's what's quite good about all of this. Oh, 
And the pub opposite me's closed its doors for the last time again. The pub opposite me's closed again. It Hare and Hounds. It's um it's only open since October. This is this will be the third landlord in almost as many years. that dry a little bit but again I'd we are gonna have to sort of like go a bit of a pace but I don't mind doing it while it's damp now can you remember the green that we haven't at all used the really dark green where we want the yellow that isn't green and the blue that isn't green so that's the cadmium yellow and ultramarine and that should give us a very very dull Almost sludge green. It's beautiful though. And I might um I might put a bit of cad red in there as well. And the background yeah, there's a tree right behind the um left the left tree here that's um I'm just going to put it in. I'm using a thin brush now to slow me down a little bit and make me think a little bit more about trees. But I don't want it to be too uniform. Yeah, I'm using the ultramarine and cad yellow mix for that tree that's right on the right. Um, and then that means I'm having to go in, in the weeping willow. But I'm also going to have to go around... Good, and messes, messes are good. See, I want this tr this colour really, a really dark green. Um, but it does mean I'm having to cut into this light green on the left as well and I switched to using a thin brush because to give me a bit more control but it just makes everything so fiddly oh yeah I'm I'm running out of colour left, right and centre and I am going to have to keep making new dark green 
but I will be doing purple in a bit and I think that will help me but this ultramarine cad yellow mix is so so blue um, the depth yeah it is it's really hard and that's why I've ended up making more because I went so I was running out that and I was diluting it instead of um just making more and it it's made it it hasn't made it worse but it's made made life harder for me instead of just um relinquishing if you like and going oh, okay I'll just make a bit more colour that you want. Yeah. So flick down the bottom on that grass so it looks a bit like there's a grass although it's shadow isn't it as well i'll do a purple glaze over that when i get to it when i get to the purple i'm I'm still playing with my almost black it's amazing how dark you can get that green from the cad yellow and ultramarine but you do need a lot of ultramarine yeah Well, I've got a gate and everything now. My landlord put it up the other day. And he's fixed all my fence that blew down. I didn't actually notice it, you know, when I got home. Bear in mind, I have to actually open the gate to get into my house. And it had been missing since the storms. I opened the gate and didn't realise. And then I could smell really strong creosote. And I thought, where the devil's that creosote coming from? And then I thought, oh... Got a new gate. Got a new fence. So that's good. I'm nice and nice and secure. I can't get pillaged. Actually, it's not even locked. It's just a gate, so that I could. But it's a it's a nice barrier to stop people's pets. Yeah. Um, well, I've got I've got such a tiny yard that I don't have a front garden. I just have um, a small yard in front of the um, front door, and then a tiny side and a little backyard. And next door, but the side of my house is the side of my garden, and then I've got next doors about four feet higher than me. So no, I don't. I don't actually get anything by me. Even though I, it, it's a very popular route with people going for walks down the lane and and what have you. I, we have got. I'm sure I've seen a cat somewhere, but they don't like my garden. Even though it's gravel, and normally cats like gravel. Mm. Wow. Hmm. 
where I lived where I lived in Bicester, my my front garden under the window was always a cat toilet and I didn't have a cat. I couldn't work out where it was coming from. But every time I went to do the weeding and or do everything I'd, I'd my hands would be full of full of it. You can see how that dark blue green is really um and this is this isn't my shadow color yeah it's a lot of ultramarine a little bit of cad yellow and a pinhead of cad red but i'll probably add more cad red to that to do the i think it's like a copper beach to the right And um, oh, now that's a nice red copper beach colour. So I've just added loads of cad red. Gosh, it's coming up to half past eight, and I've got all my shadow colour to stick on. And you're using tubes. So yeah, it is. It's almost. It's almost ultramarine, to be quite honest. It looks. It looks more black than it is on my screen. Um, it really isn't as as black as it is. It's it's like a very. I suppose you'd call it for, forest forest green, maybe. then I tell you what would work if you mix lemon yellow and Payne's grey together that would give you a really um It looks like this. Oh, do you know what? If I had a bit more red, there's, there's almost a path in the foreground, isn't it? It's not all grass. And I think it should be tarmac, but I'm going to do a bit of brown. Right, I'm stopping for ages now because the, the only thing I need to add is my purple. And um, everything needs to be bone dry. You could use um it could be it could be in shadow, so you could just do that in the purple when we do that. So it'll look like you're inside the tree.
Well, yeah, um, you might want to check out the shop's social media posts tomorrow. Something, something new, as if because you know I've got so much spare time. <laughs> I came up with an idea to do something, um, and it's taken me uh, three hours, four hours to produce. I thought it would only take me a few minutes. But I'm quite pleased with the result, and um, you'll be able to see it tomorrow. Well, technically, if you go to our website, you're able to see it now, but I'm not going to tell you. I'll have to wait and see tomorrow. No, well, as soon as I've taken a photograph of this um, painting, when I've finished it, I'm going to be... Um, doing a montage of all of the February paintings that I've taught because I've started doing that now I, I, and I'm hoping if I don't delete them off my phone I can do a whole year so come December I can put all of my montages together in rows of four and I'll have um, I'll have the whole year's uh, lessons Kind of fun. I don't do it for commissions and stuff necessarily, but I do it for all my lessons and lessons and demos. Lots of greens there that we've used. So when when you think only using two yellows, two blues, and a red so far, uh, well actually we're only using two yellows, two blues, and a red anyway, aren't we? I found out the flag that my mom used to wave, my mom waved on the jubilee in 1953. Yeah. I'll see if I can reach it. Yeah. It's made in Britain. British made. It's very moth eaten. There we go, look at that. Wooden dowel. I actually, I actually keep it by the. Um, I've got because my my grandfather's brother was killed in action in uh, Northamptonshire in December nineteen forty one. He was only in his twenties, um, and uh, I, I've got the. He's got a, a, a where he was born in the West Midlands. He's got a war grave and a war in his name's on the war memorial. So I've got the certificate of the uh, from the war memorial commonwealth grave thing and i keep two poppies on it and i have that flag over it um but i will take a photograph of the flag ready for the coronation because yeah that's what my mum waved and she's kept it she kept it all those years and then she only really gives me the stuff that's valuable not not valuable but um that means something because my brother and sister have never really been into family history. They've never really been into anything. And my sister's, I'm, I'm a maximalist and my sister is a minimalist. Um, my house is rather cluttered and it can sometimes get a bit dusty. It's not like a hoarder's place. It's homely, but messy. And But the thing is, everything in here means something. I, I, you could pick at anything, and I mean, a few things may be a, a, what I picked up from charity shops or tips. But you could pick up most things, and I could say, oh, I, I can tell you a whole story about it. It's a shame I haven't got any children, really, because I, I, before, <laughs> if I feel ill, <laughs> I'm going to have to go around writing post-it notes on everything, just in case I pop me clogs, so everybody knows what 
belonged to what and why it was in why it was here. Um, I added. Uh, I've got that dark green from the the ultramarine cadmium yellow, and I've just added more cadmium red. Quite a lot of cadmium red, so it's a red green. Our special offer that we had over the weekend at, uh, on our art stream did really, really well. Because we really needed it. Yeah, we had 26 orders. Of, of varying amounts which is good now we're coming i can i'll i'll tell you the idea that we we've come up with well jackie's come up with i can't use the royal way it's jackie um you know when i do my weekly rundown of this is the classes that we've done these are barry's demonstration pieces i will put the uh, I, I ought to put the art stream links underneath so you can anyone can access each one. But also, we're going to do a vote. So people vote for their favourite and whichever their favourite will be, will be half price for that week. On art stream. You know what I mean? So it'll be, if it's, I don't know, if last week, I can't remember, everybody seemed to like the pastel landscape with reflections. So... I'd go and make that half price for just for the until Saturday until the Saturday um, and then everyone votes for the next lot and then that one becomes half price because it's going to be popular because people have voted for it. Um, and then, um, yeah, just a way to keep engagement and revenue coming in and, and it kind of helps people as well because you know times are getting extremely tough or they will be very soon um. no it is um very frustrating times so we could we could do without everything that's going on over there as well it's bad enough just just managing right I'm gonna make my purple because it's 20 25 to 9 where has the time gone it's a scary bit but I'm hoping it will like pop it out I have got purple, um, but I don't know if it's purple, it's too purple, the purple paint I've got, but it might work actually. Purple lakes quite a red purple, if it's a, bl a blue purple will work quite well. I am. I've, I've, I've. It should be ultramarine and cadmium red, but that purple, I'm not a massive fan of. Let me mix a better purple myself. Well, I am. I like it as a purple paint, but for the shadow that I need today, I want it aubergine. Aubergine, aubergine. Yeah. Now that branch. Mm. 
and card red. No, it is it is very difficult with um, this kind of thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm trying to look at where the dark bits are on that trunk. Might put a bit of white gel pen or something. Um, on the highlighty bits, perhaps. I don't know. It does look weird without shadow. Well, I'm I'm using the purple for the really dark part of the tree as well on the far far right hand side. Well, I don't know, mine's come out so dark that it's hard to see anyway. I'm still having to rely on what I can see on the screen. And my screen, because I'm using, I've, I've got Facebook comments up on the right and then I've got um, the whole of my whole screen that I can see what you can see is the size of a postcard. So the image that <coughs> the reference image is is for me about just a little bit bigger than a large letter stamp, which is quite tricky to spot.
be using the purple more um, dilute for glazing shadows on the grass some of the background trees I don't want to lose all of the light though but you do kind of need a bit of both So I'm hopeful that a, a purpley glaze in the background grass, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have to use my squirrel for that, just so you can see what's some, what I'm aiming for next. And then if I flick forward and down with a thin brush while that's damp, that'll look like I've got lighter grass. Um, no, I haven't done them yet. I'm doing them in a minute with this more of a glaze. I'm going to let that one dry. A gel pen might come out or maybe a bit of white gouache, I don't know. Quarter to so 
I've got my foreground shadow to do, which needs to be a bit darker. Okay. Oh, that's looking nice. Yeah, you might have to cut into that one a little bit more, make it a bit more sparse around the edges. But, um, yeah. But also, for like in your Weeping Willow, there's a really, in the photo, there's a really dark bit um, on almost to the centre right. Um, and that's what I've added more dark in. Um, you see, you might find it easier once you've... Uh, seen my you know once once i've posted the original f painting if you like because you'll be able to see where all my darks are probably a bit easier than the um the actual photograph maybe i don't know does stand out how I thought it would, which is a bonus.
dry brushing some of that shadow down at the front just to make it a bit darker. Because it's the only way of getting the strength. The strength of sun is determined by the strength of shadow. Because, um, you know, the sun, the blue sky could still be blue, but the sun could be behind a cloud off, off camera, if you like. So the darker your shadows, the more we know the sun is out in full force. See, I'm so tempted for a bit of gel pen. Let me get a bit of hair dryer on this for a second. Oh, it's five two. what I know I can do, well you could use white gouache if you needed to just um, put back, mix some white gouache with your lemon colour if you wanted to, to put back some of the lighter foliage over your darks if you've got too much. almost do it neat 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 yellow yeah
I think it'll look alright once um, Yeah, I'm I'm currently just mixing a bit of white gouache with some lemon yellow and um it's it's allowing me to put some brighter leaves back where to, to make it a bit more dangly, if you know what I mean. And it allows me um to go lighter behind where the tree is darker, which kind of brings it forward. Got yeah. <laughs> so it's it's all about contrast, isn't it? I think that's that's the important thing. So whether you need to add more dark or whether you have to go back in with, with gouache afterwards. Um, yeah, because it's got a dangle, hasn't it? Being a weeping willow, you, you you've got to have the. It'll work. It's just it's just being um sometimes you do have to fiddle. Not not needlessly fiddle, but fiddle to finish. I kind of like that. Although the grey that I've, um, the brown that I put on uh, with the white, um, I put some white gua uh, gel pen over the trunk. I'm going to use a bit of white gouache, I think, with with some brown, just to make a light brown. but it just looks a little bit too um, contrived. So I can add uh, some extra. Darks. If I need to afterwards. But a lot of the time it is just addressing, oh hang on, that's too light, need to darken that, oh hang on now, that's too dark, need to lighten that. Now I've got to make that lighter, now I've got to make that darker, now I've got to change that. So there is lots of bits that you don't always think about. Because it is only one tree, but because it's not even that it's a specific tree that's in in Banbury, if you like, but because it's a, a a weeping willow, it does have to resemble. It. I think I think it will. Once you've done a bit of extra, light and dark and stuff on it. Right, I don't think I'm going to do any more. Let me just give you a rundown of what's coming up this week and for next Monday. So, tomorrow afternoon's acrylic class is a barn amongst spring flowers. Wednesday morning's gouache class is a lighthouse on a rocky coast. Wednesday afternoon's drawing class is blossom on a branch. Thursday morning, pastels is a hare. I think it's a hare. It's either a hare or a rabbit. I can't, I don't know. Probably a rabbit. Um, 
Thursday afternoons, watercolour class is a blue butterfly and a pink blossom. Friday afternoon is the snowy stroll with a style. Saturday, free demo, uh, boxing hairs in gouache. That's on our Facebook page, 11 o'clock. Monday morning from Wardington, a hair in pencil. And Monday evening, a landscape with a mid-distant church. So hopefully you found, even if it may not have worked out how you thought it may have done in your head or how you hoped hopefully you've got a better understanding or a slightly better understanding of greens and how to make it even if you haven't managed to make it and shadow But I will. I'll take a photograph of of this and post it underneath the reference. I've I've heightened the contrast more. If you notice on mine, I've really gone for the lemony, sunlit look. Yeah. Yes. I'm I'm gonna say goodbye now. So. Um, Okie doke. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye bye everybody. See you soon. Bye bye.